All right, welcome back. Uh, we're headed for another trip to the comedy gold mine that is old Wurzel Gummidge, the sovereign citizen. And this video I haven't watched yet. It's titled, Please Help Me Gain Our Freedoms Back. I think he misspelled it under what he's going for. It probably should have been spelled F-R-E-E-D-U-M-B-S, free dumbs. But um, this might be the video that KFAR covered a couple days ago. I'm not sure. But I have a feeling it's going to be entertaining nonetheless. And so for those of you who are new, hi, I'm Joe. I'm a lawyer licensed to practice in the state of Utah. This moron we're covering today is in Texas. Uh, hence, I sometimes also call him Lucky the Sovereign Citizen, RIP Tom Petty. And yeah, he, he's just, he's dumb and he likes going on rants in his little shack there. So let's see what what this rant brings shall we oh i'm gonna leave my cash app in the description uh i need help uh sorry to stop so soon why is he leaving his cash app under his mythology why would he want us dollars why would he want fiat currency shouldn't he be asking for people to send Gold by stagecoach or something? I need people to donate to me uh, so I can raise the money to sue the county clerk's office for committing maladministration and to sue the sheriff's station uh, and every sheriff and to sue uh, the state uh, and anyone else for maladministration. So, he's going to have a little trouble suing the state, but, you know, state sovereign immunity and all that. He can sue Greg Abbott as a representative of the, of the state, but this reminds me, suing all the sheriffs. Is this just all the sheriffs in Texas? All of the sheriff's deputies in one county? All the sheriffs in the United States. That that there's a lawsuit suing all the sheriffs in Florida that I need to cover because it looks like comedy gold. But it, he, like, at this point, is he just raising money for the four hundred and two dollar filing fee? to get into federal court looking at his shack he might qualify for the informa pauperis free filing except that would be bad news for him because that's a short circuit basically if you file for free the court gets to look at it and dismiss before the defendant even sees the case because hey if you're not going to pay the filing fee they're not going to waste their time on frivolous cases. So, or is he raising money to pay for a lawyer? More on that later. They are committing maladministration against we the people. In the Constitution, it states we the people are the authority. We the people are in charge, not them. They are not in charge of our life. What the Constitution does is, if you recall the last time we covered this numbskull, we went into the Constitution. And we looked at, we, we specifically looked at Article 3 of the Constitution, which covers the judiciary. And we did that to look at... Um, jurisdiction the actual 
constitutional jurisdiction for federal courts. But we also, if you remember, we took a peek at Article 1 because there are Article 1 courts, such as the bankruptcy court, the tax court, various others, uh, the court for the, the local court for the District of Columbia. Those are all Article 1 courts. Why are they Article 1 courts? Because the legislature established them. They So Article 1 of the Constitution outlines the legislature. So when he says, the Constitution says we the people are in charge, the Constitution actually establishes a republic. The Constitution establishes a, con uh, a democratic republic. Article 1 of the Constitution specifically outlines that we shall have a legislature, a bicameral legislature, constituting a Senate with two senators from every state and so many in the House of Representatives that... Um, the number actually isn't in the Constitution itself. I, it's a federal statute, I, I believe. So that actually can and probably should change. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but frankly, Congress, uh, specifically the House of Representatives, needs to expand drastically so that we actually have, you know, representation in Congress when 435 um, representatives was set as the, the number, we had a whole lot fewer states and way smaller population. We shouldn't have between 500,000 and 700,000 people per representative. That, that just, that they, they so yeah, I think we need way, way, way more. But that that's aside from the point. But Article 1, it sets up the legislature, how to elect the legislature, what their powers are. So when he says, we the people, the government is the representation of we the people as established by the Constitution. And then at the state level, you, you know, you, you may remember, let, let me let me pull it up for you. Let's uh, switch windows. Hang on, I screwed up there. Uh, chose the wrong screen. That's the one I want. Okay. Blank Google. So you can see the process. Once again, I'm in Utah. I'm going to show you for you. Well, no, since this moron's in Texas, let's show him Texas. Show him we the people in Texas. Let's go Texas Constitution. Pull it up here. Scroll down a bit. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Hey, what do you know? There's Article 3 in Texas is the Legislative Department. Oh, wow! Article 3, Section 1, Senate and House of Representatives. The legislative power of this state shall be vested in a Senate and House of Representatives, which together shall be styled the legislature of the state of Texas. Section 2, membership of Senate and House of Representatives. The Senate shall consist of 31 members. 
the House of Representatives shall consist of 150 members. This was established February 15, 1876, amended November 2, 1999. Oh, wow, look. Article 3, Section 3, the election and term of office for senators. And then Section 4, the election and term of office for House of Representatives. Meetings, orders of business, qualifications of senators, qualifications of representatives. Um, each house, uh, judge of qualifications and election of its members, election contests, yeah. So, president pro tempore of Senate, lieutenant governor vacancy, blah, blah, blah. Um, hey, rules, procedure, punishment, expulsion of members, journals of proceedings, record votes. Vacancy in legislature, privilege from arrest during legislative section session, because, you know, you don't want that tyrannical government, the tyrannical majority, to have members arrested to keep them from voting for laws they're, you know, or voting against laws they don't. Uh, imagine that. So this, this is an anti-tyranny provision uh open sessions adjournments uh so th this this moron says we the people are in charge we the people elect people because there's 340 million americans he's in texas there's 40 million texans or 35 or whatever If everyone's in charge, then it's anarchy. That's why we elect a few people and we tell we tell them through our elections, hey, these are the policies we favor. If you want to stay elected, you should maybe try enacting a few of them. I, I, I know that's a foreign concept to some morons, but... It, Oh, he, hey, here's a good one. Word section, Article 3, Section 21. Words spoken in debate. No member shall be questioned in any other place for words spoken in debate in either house. What does that mean? Hey, that means you can't be found liable for defamation if you're speaking in the House of Congress, in the in your legislative capacity on the floor in debate you you you've you've got privilege so you you can't be questioned for words spoken in debate you can't be hauled into court to answer for that isn't that a great concept So when he says, we the people, he really means me. I should be in charge. None of you should have any say over what happens in the wider world. He, he, but the only place his individual voice matters is in that little crap shack of his. in our property and our ability to travel by any means necessary they're violating the law they are committing felonies against everyone who is not involved in commerce so if you could please you know anyone who, who can't afford to uh to help me out uh and donate to my cash app because I want to sue these people. I want to get involved in helping to set us free from these people that has no authority over us. There's nothing in the U.S. Constitution that grants states, uh, representatives of states, governors, mayors, 
uh, and the government to create a department of authority. That's exactly what the Constitution allows. It, it's, you know, you may argue the bureaucratic state is too large, but uh, how the, the bureaucracy is what enacts you, you know, it that they're the foot soldiers that put the policy into action. But he, he you know, he, he wants to sue. What what jurisdiction are you suing under? You suing under common law? Or are you suing under admiralty? Or are you suing on federal question? Or are you suing on, you know, whatever, uh, civil rights, which, which is a statute, but statute law doesn't exist according to you. It, it... To be ran or, uh, or to uh, be used against the people. There is nothing that gives them that right. They, they, when they create departments, they have the right to make uh, rules, policies, regulations, mandates, edicts, uh, uh, ordinances against them, the departments that they create. Mm. Then why would anyone join those departments? I mean, yeah, that they, they do have, you know, employment handbooks that, but... It, it's like I said, the legislature passes laws. They send those laws to the executive who signs them into law. But then once once they become law, let's say, you know, let's say securities laws. You know, the, you, you've got the 1933 and 1944 securities laws. Congress passed them. President Roosevelt signed them. But how, how, how are you going to enforce them? Congress isn't going to go out and, you know, analyze these broker dealers or uh, the companies go investigate their CFOs. No, that's not their job. They're the ones passing laws. Frankly, it would be a separation of powers issue because, you know, they're the legislative. It's the executive power. But the president isn't going to do it. The vice president isn't going to do it. So what are they going to do? They're, they're going to create the Securities and Exchange Commission, a federal agency, and this is the same at the state level. The every state has a, a division of securities, and every state attorney general is going to have a white collar criminal division. But they're going to they create the Securities and Exchange Commission and say you are tasked with enforcing these laws enacting these laws you can you have rulemaking authority to to do what you've been tasked with doing now it's not unlimited rulemaking authority but if if they had to go you know if the sec had to go to congress you know and every single time and say, hey, so we found this guy named Bernie Madoff and he he's doing a lot of bad stuff. Will you pass a law saying we can go after him? No. That That's stupid. And the, the government uses that against the states. The, uh, they have no authority over us. Government and states has not been given any authority over we the people. 
And we have to start acting as we the people, one of the people, and tell them, I am one of the people of we the people, and I am the authority. I am the one in charge, not you. You are committing maladministration, and then you sue them. You have... Um, find a, find a cause of action for maladministration. But once again, what he wants is anarchy. He, he wants roads to be built for him, for him to have a free for all on. But once again, God didn't give him roads. The, the state built them. So the state has a say in how they're used. Cause, cause once again, the state is composed, the state of Texas is composed of 30 or 40 million people. And those people, through voting, but also th they vote with their pocketbook, they vote with their actions. They say, I'm, I want to build a subdivision here. I want to live here. Therefore, either I'm going to build a road and, you know, sign it over to the government or I'm going to build a road and it's going to be part of this private subdivision, privately maintained or whatever. But the, it, it's a collective thing. The roads aren't, ju don't just appear. They, they either are built to induce demand or they're built because of demand and they're paid for by those 30 million, 40 million people in the state of Texas. But this guy who, judging by his crap shack here, he's paid maybe about 350 in taxes his entire life. All the roads are his. Make it make sense. Your, your camera on. You know, your cell phone camera or any other camera, and you record it and you let them know the laws that you know. Because every cop, every sheriff, every state trooper, every mayor, every governor, every police chief, uh, every judge is committing maladministration under le using legalese. Oh, it's under legalese. Wow. And ju just by virtue of them having the job, they're committing maladministration. What if they do what you want? Is that still maladministration? Because is it maladministration if they do what this moron wants? Well, then it's maladministration against me because they're not doing what I want. So, so... Who, who who gets to decide who's committing maladministration? But he, he says, you need to go out and tell them the laws you know. Which laws? Because he, he, makes, he makes laws up. Or, or, you know, he takes made up laws from other sovereign citizens or, you know, but... Which laws? Because he doesn't believe the statutes of the state of Texas are law. They are. He doesn't believe the federal code is law. It is. Oh, but wait. You know, the, the 18 U.S.C. 241-242, even though those are statutes, they come straight from the federal code. But the... Those laws are okay because, you know, those charge government officials with crime for violating our rights, even though this guy, as a sovereign citizen, pretty much believes that it's a private action you can take. No, the government has to charge you with 18 U.S.C. 241. But how? Oh, wait, wait, wait. How about this one is a private cause of action? 18 or... 42 U.S.C. 1983, deprivation of rights under color of law. Well, no, sorry. That, that is 18 U.S.C. 241. But um, 
42 USC 1983 is, is the civil rights, uh, whatever. So, and, uh, and that is a civil cause of action, not criminal. But once again, it's straight from the federal code. It's federal law, statute. Sovereign citizens love to trot that one out, but it's not common law. It, it, it's statute. It's a statute. So th they th they threaten every single government worker with a 1983 action. They sue over it all the time. But under their theory, how are the, how are they even doing it? What court are they doing it in? Because under their legal fan fiction, there is no court in the land that can hear a 1983 action because it's a statutory law. And it, it it's not maritime because it's not, you know, deprivation of rights on the high seas. So it, it's not common law and it's not maritime admiralty. It's statutory law. So... What court are you suing in under 1983 or 241, 242 for that matter? Because those same, same thing. Well, you're doing it in federal court because like we discussed a couple videos ago, discussing jurisdiction, Article 3, Section uh, 2 of the U.S. Constitution has a whole list and it's... Um, the courts shall have jurisdiction over all of these, including um, deciding uh, laws of the United States. So that's federal question jurisdiction. But he doesn't believe in federal question jurisdiction because it's not common law, unless it's federal common law, but federal statutory law, he doesn't believe in. So how do you how how do you do a 1983 case? I assume this maladministration, if he ever attempts it, which it'll get thrown out real fast. But if he ever attempts his maladministration case, is it going to be a 1983 case? I bet you it will be. But legalese is maladministration. They're violating your rights, your civil rights, and your rights by of, in the laws of the Bill of Rights, the first eight. They're violating. So the Bill of Rights is the first 10 amendments, except he, he skips over them. He When he talks about the constitutional amendments, he talks about one through eight, and then like either 11 and, or 12 through 27 because he pretends the 9th and 10th don't exist, and maybe even the 11th, which, hey, if the 11th doesn't exist, that's convenient for him so that he can sue the state of Texas. But what, what, about, what about the body of the Constitution? Because lots of people forget that the amendments, hey, those are... Those are amendments to the Constitution. The, the Constitution itself has, you, you know, six, seven, eight articles. I, I can't remember. It doesn't matter here. But, you know, Article 3, Article 2, Article 1, uh, providing for the three branches of the federal government. So, And, and he keeps saying legalese is maladministration. No, legalese is just bad English. They're trying to beat it out of young lawyers. And for the most part, it's only sticking around in some contracts. But for the most part, they're trying to get lawyers to write in plain English so that it can be understood because... You know, law is hard enough without trying to interpret archaic language. That's all legalese is, is archaic language and bad grammar. So. Those laws, they are called laws. They're not amendments. They're laws. 
11 through 12 or 11 through 27 are amendments. Then then why why are they the first amendment, second amendment, third amendment? It it's because now now this is important. It's because they weren't in the constitution when it was first ratified. It was amended to include them. So, yes, it is law. It's constitutional law. But so are all the other amendments. Except for the 19th, 18th, the prohibition. That's no longer law because it was overturned. They passed a new amendment, the 21st Amendment, I believe. So, it, it, if it takes a ratification process, it's an amendment to the Constitution. The securities law, the 1983 securities law that I mentioned, 1933, did, did I say 1983? 1933 securities law, um, that's a law. It's not an amendment. Why? Because it was passed by Congress and signed by the President. It wasn't voted on by the states. The First Amendment, hey, it was passed by Congress and it was voted on by the states. So it was ratified. Same with two through eight and nine and 10 and 11 through 27 for that matter. So he, he, he just, he tries to, once again, he, he has this fan fiction, a legal fan fiction, a governmental fan fiction, a reality fan fiction, where if it's something that he, that he likes, then it's real. He likes the First Amendment, so that's law. That's constitutional law. He doesn't like, I'm guessing, the 14th Amendment. So that's just an amendment. That doesn't count. I can ignore that. Hey, 17th Amendment, I don't need to elect no stinking senators. Let the state Senate do that. They're separate. They're not part of the Bill of Rights. It's the Bill of Rights and then the amendments to the Constitution. You need to learn that. You but what about the Articles of the Constitution? And I'm not talking the Articles of Confederation that sovereign citizens somehow think is still in effect. Article 4, I'm looking at you. It, it was superseded by the Constitution entirely. But it, it, it's, it's like 1 through 8 are the Constitution. And then there's amendments after that. And those are separate. But what what about the actual articles, the body of the Constitution that before it was amended? That exists. You always ignore that, except for when you say there's only two jurisdictions. Where, where does that come from? That's not in the Bill of Rights. That's not in any of the other amendments. And And he says the Bill of Rights is one through eight. It's one through ten. You all got it wrong. You've been lied to by these people who want to turn us all into slaves to for them to. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey, whoa. whoa. these people want to turn us into slaves. But that was outlawed by the 13th Amendment for the most part. So. You, 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 you pretend that. The amendments after eight are lesser, they're lesser law, so you can ignore them? So, so hey, I can have this guy as my slave because the 13th Amendment, it doesn't count because it's just an amendment. But I can't tell him as my slave which religion he should have. It, it is, 
Is that is that what he's getting at? Is that the world he wants? I, that that's what it sounds like to me. I, I mean, and, and when I say the Thirteenth Amendment outlawed slavery for the most part, it except as punishment. So you can you know if you convict someone of a crime, you can send them to do slave labor, and that's bullshit. And that needs to actually come out of the Constitution. We we need an amendment clarifying that there is no slavery, period. The state of Utah, luckily, we amended our state constitution to take that language out. I, I believe we did that in 2018. So that's just recent. To make money off of and do as they please with. They sit here and do as they please with us, and they do not have that right. They're committing maladministration. Look it up. They are using extortion and bribery and all kinds of other stuff that is a felony. Extortion is a felony, and they're committing maladministration when they uh, exercise extortion upon you they cannot arrest you without a warrant and by by extortion he means requiring you to register your vehicle and have a driver's license to use the roads in an automobile you don't have to you don't have to get a driver's license you don't have to register a vehicle you can walk you can hoof it everywhere you go, and hey, you haven't paid them a penny to do so. That's your right. That's your right. If they do, they're committing maladministration. If the judge allows that, the judge is committing maladministration. You all need to learn that word, and this is a word that we can use to take these people out of office and have them thrown in prison for committing a felony. Who's going to throw them in prison? There's, there is no government because they've all been convicted of maladministration. So who's going to throw them in prison? Who's going to run the prison? Other than, you know, Prison Corporation of America or Polycom or, you know, Abolish private prisons, by the way. They're bullshit. But the seriously, you you've just you've just convicted the entire government, both elected or bureaucratic, of felonies, of maladministration, the made up crime of maladministration. So as felons, you're sending them to prison, but who, who, first off, what courts? What courts have convicted them? Who's prosecuted them? And then who's running the prison? Who's imprisoning them? Oh, I've got an idea. As a people, let's, t let's get together and hire some people to represent us to hold them in prison. We'll call them a government. And so that no one carries too much of a burden, we'll let them just, you know, take a, take a little bit from everyone to pay for it. We'll call that taxes. But we better get some rules for them. So let, let's write them down and decide on it collectively. And let's call that a constitution. Otherwise, it's just anarchy. So I need your help. I need donations sent to my cash app. So that way I can start suing these people. I need 55, uh, pretty much $50,000 uh, 
so I can start suing these people. And we can start getting our rights back. If you want to be free, in America, it's supposed to be uh, land of the free, home of the brave. Well, you help me. I'm being brave, and I'm going to get out there, and I'm going to put myself on the line with these tyrants that do murder people like me and sue them and take them out of office. And So if you want to be free, Send me money. You can't make this shit up. But he, he needs $50,000 to sue these people. What? I don't know, but I doubt he's going to break down why he needs $50,000. Because the filing fee is $402 in federal court. So I'm assuming he needs it to hire a lawyer. But aren't lawyers part of that British accreditation registry? They're foreign agents and evil. Um, I was temporarily a subject of the Queen when I lived in England. I, I had a visa. But I never swore allegiance to the queen to practice law. I swore an oath to, to the state and federal constitutions. But so $50,000, is, is that what he needs for to hire an attorney? Well, he doesn't because attorneys, funny enough, unless a judge tells them, you are appointed to this case, and they don't do that lightly. It, it's criminal cases they do that in. But lawyers have agency. We don't have to take any case we don't want to take. And frankly, we have a duty to not take frivolous cases. We have a duty not to make frivolous arguments. We can make novel arguments. We can make creative arguments to the court. We can't make frivolous arguments to the court. And what this numbskull is arguing is frivolous. It is absolute buffoonery to, to go in front of a judge and say, all government employees, including you, judge, are committing maladministration simply by doing your job. I'd be disbarred if I brought that lawsuit. I, well, maybe not disbarred, but I would certainly be sanctioned. I would certainly be fined more than I could afford to pay the court. So... What, where's this lawyer he, he thinks he's going to find for $50,000 to put their license on the line to argue nonsense? Even if this weren't frivolous, $50,000 is nothing for federal litigation. If you want to take this through trial... You're talking 250000 half a million. Unless you're looking to hire Jose de Castro. And let me tell you, he may claim to be a 20-year law scholar, but he's a moron. I, I, I know, I'm going out on a limb there calling him a moron. It's pretty shocking, but uh, I mean... One thing you'll never hear me claim is to be a constitutional law scholar. I've taken constitutional law classes. I passed them. I passed the bar, which includes constitutional law questions. I've discussed constitutional law with you guys. But as I've often said, I don't know if I've said it on video much, but at any given time, there are nine constitutional law experts in the world. Everyone else is varying degrees of amateur. 
And what I mean by that is there's nine federal Supreme Court justices at any given time. They are the experts because they are the ones that interpret constitutional law. Everyone else, including judges on the courts of appeals, district court judges, magistrate judges, lawyers arguing in all of these different levels of courts, we're making arguments, we're basing it on precedents, but if the Supreme, it's the Supreme Court has the final say. So if, you, you know, the, here in Utah, we're part of the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals, which is in Denver, but if the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals says, this is what is constitutional or unconstitutional, they're, they're going out on a limb, maybe not a very, you know, precarious limb, but they're, they're saying this is our interpretation of the constitution to the best of our abilities. And if, if we're right, the Supreme Court either won't take up the case or they'll affirm our decision or whatever. But if we're wrong, if the Supreme Court says, no, you're wrong. This is what the Constitution is. Then they'll grant the appellant's uh, cert and they will give a decision. And that's what the Constitution is. So, so unless I make it onto the Supreme Court, which I won't, you will never hear me say I'm a constitutional law expert. A constitutional law scholar. I'm an amateur. I'm less of an amateur than most of the population, much more of an amateur than a bunch of others. So with that, I don't think I'm going to do the last minute and five seconds of his video because, oh, I, I, I keep going to his videos because they're most of them are three or four minutes long. And I'm like, oh, I can crank that out real fast. And then, you know, six minutes of video that, you know, six minutes, 11 seconds I've gone through has taken me 47 minutes and 45 seconds to go through just because he's so stupid and so wrong and so outrageous that despite my intentions of just cranking out a short video about him, somehow it just always turns into a lot more than I intended. And I'm going to get people in the comments. They're probably gone by now saying, you talk too much. You need to shut up and just let the video play. I'm not here as a rebroadcaster. I'm, frankly, I'm not here as a reaction channel. I'm not s -s 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 a sniper wolf. I'm a commentary channel. And I I'm here to talk. I'm talking about this moron. I'm talking about his video, but his video isn't my content. My commentary is my content. And, you know, I, I get the comments, let's say, when I do the old Squishy Gardener videos, it's the underlying subject matter of those. You know, it's probably, I, I, I probably don't need fair use to apply. With this guy's, I do. I do need fair use because th this, this video, please help me gain our freedoms back. He owns the copyright in that. Old Squishy Gardener owns the copyright in his videos, at least to the extent that he has contributed to them. So his 
clickety clack commentary. He owns the copyright, but the court videos, I'd argue, are public domain. But I think it's good practice, at least for myself, to to make sure everything I do qualifies as fair use, just so that I'm not lazy, but also so that I'm adding. Because if you don't want my commentary, why would you watch? And like I said, I know if you're still here, you're not one of those people leaving those comments. And I know it's not unique to me. I know every commentary streamer gets them. So, uh, rant over. Um, but with that, please do like, share, subscribe, bribe your friends to do the same, unless they're the people who leave those comments, then tell them to shut up. Um, and I will see you soon for the next one. This is going to go live during the Utah-Oregon game, so go Utes. Um, uh, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.